Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining this short talk by myself, Mr. Ed Walton, Deputy Head Teacher at Fraser Academy with responsibility for the senior phase, our curriculum and our partnerships with our local institutions, the North East Scotland College and Robert Gordon University. This evening, I'm going to be talking about the opportunities that are on offer, both within our school courses for fifth year and also with these institutions, as I've mentioned. We'll be having a deep dive into some of the options, how we undertake them, and also giving you some information on opportunities that have not existed before, or maybe are new to you, and that we're quite used to here at the school that have been running for the last five or six years. So strap in, it's going to be an interesting talk, I hope, uh, because there is an awful lot of opportunity on offer, and most of all, an opportunity to make fifth year and your sixth year bespoke to you and your career. So, some news about the senior phase. What's coming up? Well, to help explain what fifth year looks like, it's important that I remind you of where we've come from. And at Fraser Academy, our third year was 50% personalised to all learners, with the other 50% selected by myself to balance literacy, numeracy, health and wellbeing across different subject areas. Fourth year, the year you're currently in, we handed a little bit more responsibility over to you, where you could choose four of your in-school choices, and also you had the mandatory English and maths. Two thirds of the fourth year students have also this year opted to do a college course on the Monday, Wednesday afternoon or on the Friday, which we thoroughly encourage and support. Looking ahead to fifth year, as you can see, much more of the options are in that copper gold color. That's to indicate that it is 90% personalized up to you. What you do in fifth year is really open. And many people do many different things in order to make it right for them and their own growth, because everybody is needing now to start making choices about where their skills, their strengths, their knowledge needs to go for their careers, but also to develop themselves so that they're ready for their positive future. So that's how fifth year looks. We have this mandated wider studies time and the PSE time. That's the only part that is mandatory. Everything else is up to you about what you do. And even in that mandatory time of wider studies, that is the time of the week that at the moment, if you're doing a college course in fourth year, that's the college time. So many people choose to do college again with a different course or maybe to progress it further. If you're not doing a college course, then I will be asking you to do something else to widen your studies, such as volunteering, work placements and so on. I'll come to that in a short while. Just to look ahead for a couple of years time, if you do choose to do your sixth year at Fraser Academy, uh, then it will look very similar, but it, rather than wider studies, we call that leadership time because a lot of the six years take up leadership positions in the school and they spend that time to do things like house meetings, making their house boards, planning events and so on. So that is the balance of time. The question is, how are you going to ensure that you're going to have as much growth as you can through your senior phase curriculum? Well, at Fraser Academy, we have a wealth of ways in which you can grow through your senior phase. So let's have a quick look into those. As you can see, I've got eight different categories here that give you a clue about the different ways that you can grow. First and foremost, and the one that you're most familiar with, is the idea of school courses. Well, at Fraserburgh in fifth year, you've got two different types of school course. You've got exam type courses that are there to secure your university progression. And they're things like your national fives, your hires. But you've also got non-exam courses. So they're ongoing assessment, which are at levels five and six. So that means that the same level as national fives and higher, but the, di the big difference is that they're often project driven and they are assessed as you go through the course. So that means you don't have all that pressure at the end to go and sit in the hall on your own um, or perform on your own uh, in one -off, a, a one-off day performance. So a lot of our faculties now, you will see later, have got a, uh, an offer 
a course that is a non-examined course at the end, which is an ongoing assessment course. Sometimes these are known as National Progression Awards or National Certificates, uh, and they're really good because they focus on developing skills and gaining real world experience without adding to the burden of your stress levels at the end of the year. So really do take those seriously when you're filling out your courses. And in terms of number, we expect everyone to be doing somewhere between three and six in school courses. Next, you'll be very used to this idea. Uh, NESCOL courses, as I said before, uh, we expect at some point across the three years of senior phase, everyone to try at least one NESCOL course so that they've had that transition experience into learning into the future. So if you're choosing to do your fifth year, fifth year at school, I would be asking you a question of, is this the year you'd like to do your NESCO course? Uh, maybe you did it in fourth year and you'd like to do another. Maybe you're going to focus on five hires because you want to go to medicine or vet science, in which case I'd say don't do a NESCO course in, in fifth year, maybe do it in sixth year. OK, but if you're doing a mix of hires and national progression awards in um, in fifth year, then it's a great opportunity to do a NESCO course again in fourth year. Um, again, NESCOL's ongoing assessment, focusing on that real world context. And because of that fantastic oh, uh, 10 million pound building, uh, 10 minutes walk away, we, we really do encourage you to make the most of that opportunity. You've got the opportunity in fifth year to do community volunteering. For example, this year I've got a student I can picture right now who is volunteering part of his time in school to go and volunteer at the local community uh, food bank so he's signed out for uh, a session before lunch on a monday and he goes down there and he offers his time without any money without any qualification coming at the end of it but he's gaining real world experience and he's able to then talk about that how he's developed himself and his citizenship and his responsibility in the future when he's going for interviews and when he's asked what can you do what makes you you so that idea of community volunteering we want to help you to do that and uh, we've got people in school and staff who can help you connect with local community volunteering opportunities. Next, we've got a very strong relationship with Robert Gordon University and every year we have a choice of 10 courses that you can do whilst you're in your fifth year or your sixth year, which would take up one afternoon a week across two terms. It's normally the first two terms of the year. Um, so it, do you have to do one of these? No, but it's a fantastic opportunity if you do want to. Um, and we'll talk about that in a little while. Another fantastic way of spending time in your fifth and sixth year is an ongoing work placement. So as I said before, some people have um, free periods in either the afternoon sessions or in that wider studies time, and they go and work in the primary schools and the nurseries. They go and work at different workplaces. Um, and we have a full-time member of staff in school, who, our DYW coordinator, and DYW stands for developing the young workforce who can help connect you with work placements. Um, it, they are self found. What that means is we hand you the form, you go and sign them up, but we support you to do that. OK, so one or two afternoons a week for two terms is what we recommend. And then after that, it would be in school, focusing on your in school courses. Another thing that um, our fifth years sign up for as part of their wider studies program is subject champion. Now we tend to have somewhere between 30 to 50 subject champions in fifth year. And that means it's a subject that you have strength in that you like, um, and you are maybe studying that year as well for your hire or your national progression award. And it's somewhere that you would like to offer your time and you go and actually get signed up into that subject. And it might be a class that is a first year class or a second year class. And what would happen is you would get added to the teacher's register. So rather than registering in Study Hub, you would actually go to the subject area and be almost like a, an assistant teacher or a mentor for the people in the class. It can be a real help for the teacher. It can be a real help for the juniors because sometimes you might be able to say it in a way that the teacher's struggling to get it across to that particular student and the uh, student might really benefit from you taking a bit of time to explain it or show them some art skills or how to do the grid referencing in geography or whatever your strengths are okay so it's a fantastic way of gaining some experience developing your leadership and your coaching skills and ultimately, we've got other school leadership areas. So things like being a prefect. This year, we've got some house captains that are fifth year. Um, some of our fifth years help house events. 
and even running extracurricular clubs. Like tonight, as I walked past the assembly hall, I noticed that we had some of our seniors running um, a drama group. So there's excellent opportunities for you to develop the wider you in fifth year and to make the school the one that you want to be in. So you might have an idea for what you would like to run. So why not become a school leader? And finally, a part of your curriculum area is this idea. We call it a lot extracurricular. What does that mean? Well, it means something on the side of your co of your curriculum. You might call it co-curricular. I like to think of it as being something where you get to work with people from different age groups in something that's your passion. It's your it's the, your heart and soul. So it's a great opportunity. You can do more than one of these. But I would be expecting you to think about how you're developing your skills in fifth year through participating or leading and then more, more importantly, encouraging others to have success, to gain achievement and also to become confident because confidence is priceless. Your mum, your dad, your gran, your auntie, whoever you live with, if you ask them right now, what is the number one thing that I want to walk away from school with? And they'd probably say something along the lines of to be confident in what you're doing in your person. And that really comes across in interviews um, and when you're in the workplace or when you're in your future studies. Confidence is so important and one of the best places to develop confidence is through extracurricular activities. So that is a kind of map of how you could grow through your senior phase curriculum. So it's a great opportunity now to start thinking what, in what way, what balance am I going to have across these things? If you're thinking of going for vet school or dentistry or medicine, you may really need to put a lot of your eggs into the school courses basket and maybe maybe do a bit of extracurricular or maybe do a bit of school leadership. If you're focusing on going to Nesco or to university from uh, school, you might want to start thinking about doing an RGU course or a Nesco course, maybe getting some community volunteering. If you're thinking about going for an apprenticeship when you finish your high school, then maybe you want to get a work placement. Uh, maybe get some subject champion experience. But above all, we want you to enjoy your fifth year. So this idea of the extracurricular, really, I keep coming back to it. It's a great way to, for you to make sure that you're having fun whilst you're at school. And that's so important to keep you motivated for going with your school courses. OK. So that's the curriculum map of your fifth and sixth year. How can we um, help you map it out now? Well, you'll have seen subject choice forms before. This year we'll be doing it digitally again, but here's a glance at a digital version of the subject choice. You need to start thinking about your courses in order of priority, so that's one through six. There's a bit of clues here about how many. We really need you to be thinking about filling up your, your curriculum with content. That might be courses, as I've said, so we're looking at six subjects, but if you've got something else from that previous map that you're wanting to put in one of these, I can consider that as one of your curriculum areas and your guidance teacher can help you with that as well. Um, for example, if you're doing an access to RGU course, we can consider that as one of your options because it's adding so much uh, depth to your learning. Uh, the black box here at the bottom is for what you want to do with your wider studies option or your college course. And over here on the blue box over here, we've got your um, what, all the different college options that are available. We need to dive in now to the hires. Now, the hires are the only part of the curriculum that I have put into columns. Everything else, I just make balance. And actually, even the hires, if it's not working for you, fire it in and I'll see if I can make it work. But really, you'll be working with your guidance teacher over the next few weeks to start thinking about how you can map across your hires so that they're in a, a, a column orientation that's going to work for you. You'll notice some things are in here that aren't hires, but that's because they're only going to be in maybe one column. For example, um, psychology is a hire. It's only in one column. You need to start thinking about that and making everything else maybe fit around it if psychology is something you really want to do. Uh, we offer Duke of Edinburgh uh, Silver um, Award as, a, as an option in D. That is only in D. So everything else we need to try and fit around that. There is the extracurricular Duke of Edinburgh if you can't make it fit into your columns. Tech Maths is in column F. F. That is a progression from National 5 or Craft Maths. And that is a uh, no exam at the end uh, alternative to hire. It's a level six and it's a great progression into HNC or into uh, apprenticeship or NESCO uh, courses uh, because that would be what you would do if you were starting your HNC in say engineering at NESCO. They would be doing level six tech maths. So that is something that is taught as a collaboration with NESCO in school tech maths, a little bit like craft maths. Uh, OK, um, the columns is a bit of a puzzle. 
but um, I do wish you all the luck with it to make it work. If it's not working, please see your guidance teacher, see me, we can see what we can do about it. Yeah, because we don't want to limit any of your uh, progression. Uh, there's a quick of a, a quick dance. Remember uh, the pattern one college courses, Monday and Wednesday, two till 4.30. It does mean that you have to make your own way home, but by doing that, it will have zero impact on any of your in-school courses, okay? Um, the uh, one year fast track for foundation apprenticeships, we can talk about when you're going into sixth year. What that means is that you do both halves of your foundation apprenticeship, both the, the in-college part and this work-based part all in one year. Uh, there's an awful lot of foundation apprenticeships, but we'll talk about them in a second, uh, but they're a great way of getting a higher level course at college. So just as I mentioned, the partnership powerhouse pays off. There's a big headline for our partnership with both uh, Nescol, Skills Development Scotland and Robert Gordon University. So let's see what that means. Well, it means that for your fifth year, the college courses continue. You've got an awful lot of different college courses you could do, the one year level five courses. Let's say you wanted to do two different ones this year and fourth year, you couldn't fit it in, you could only do one. Well, why don't you go for the other one next year? Alternatively, you could go up a level. So this year, you're probably the level five course at college. Next year, why not do a level six course? So you've got the level six exercise and fitness leadership, which is a national progression award, a bit like some of the ones we do in school. But then you've got this other strange type of course called a foundation apprenticeship, which comes in at level six on the whole. You've got all these wonderful courses like engineering types and children and young people, uh, scientific tech. But the question you might be asking, especially because mum, dad, whoever's at home may not be that familiar with this because it certainly was never there when I was at school. Uh, what you might, you'll be asking the question, what's an F, a foundation apprentice? What, what's an FA? OK, well, a foundation apprenticeship is a blend of college work and workplace work. And this was an invention by Skills Development Scotland with the Scottish Government to try and make there be more contextualised learning while you're still at school. Now, contextualised is a fancy way of saying learning in the real world. OK, it's learning where you're going to use it and in skills with employers. Now, even if you're not thinking of going straight to the world of employment, it's still really useful because I remember when I was leaving university and a lot of employers would say this, great, you've got a degree, but can you do anything? What can you actually do? Now, degrees are fantastic and the universities are getting much better at giving you workplace learning whilst you're learning your degree, but employers really want you to know and be able to show experience and have real world skills. So that's where we invented these foundation apprenticeships. I'm really hoping this is important as well, that because it's, it feels relevant because you're in the workplace and you're at college, that it makes it more engaging, that it makes it more interesting for you. So there's that side to it as well, because in the end we want your learning to be interesting. And not just like I come to school or I go to college to get my grades, to get where I'm going to go. We want it to be something that, that, that you know, piques your interest, and makes you want to get up in the morning and go, I'm really interested in this. In fact, many students who over the last few years have left at, at the end of S6 have actually turned around and said, you know what, the most exciting, most interesting part of my, my schooling was my three years where I did three different college courses, where I did that foundation apprenticeship. And that's, it, it says something to me, and it says something to a lot of our staff here, and it makes us want to make it just as interesting in school as well. Well, there's this side of it, what's it worth? Well, a foundation apprenticeship at level six, which is the same difficulty level as higher, um, it might not mean much to you, but we have this thing called tariff points, that all qualifications are worth a certain amount of tariff points. And just so that you're aware of the size of these things, uh, the average advanced hire is around 400 tariff points. So if a foundation apprenticeship is worth 450, it gives you a clue of the size of these things. They're, they're pretty sizable, they're pretty weighty. Another way of measuring value is how much does this, how, how much is this worth to the universities, okay? So as you can see, or may or may not be able to see here, there's a list on the left-hand side of the, all these Scottish universities, and it's telling you how they would see a foundation apprenticeship. So, you know, um, Glasgow School of Art is seeing a foundation apprenticeship as one higher at an A, all right? That's pretty good. Uh, Robert Gordon University, good, good partners to the school, they're saying any foundation apprenticeship they would see as a B, but then they've given this little star and then two hires at a B, okay? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means, let's say you chose to do the business skills foundation apprenticeship, and then you go on to do at Robert Gordon University uh, a degree in business. Well, they would say, well, that's that's a very relevant course for you, isn't it? The foundation apprenticeship, going on to do business. In that case, 
because it's the relevant course for going on to do business, they would rate it at, at two hires at B. Okay, so it's it's really valuable as long as it's relevant. And if it's not directly relevant, it's still valuable. It's still like a higher uh, B. All right, I hope that helps give it a sense of value, these foundation apprenticeships. Moving on now, um, let's say you choose in your fifth year to do an Access 2 course. Well, here's, an, here's a, uh, an indication of all the different courses you could do an Access 2. We've got business and management, journalism and media, computing, engineering. This year, we've got about uh, 40 of our fifth year doing um, Access 2 courses. There's also art and architecture, which is known as ACES, which is um, access to, um, is it? to access to courses in uh, education secondary school uh, across Scotland. Uh, it's the uh, art and architecture version of Access 2. Um, and Here's how it works. One evening a week, the university buses you in and out. Um, it's a university project in a university setting taught by university lecturers. They provide you with food on arrival and you get a graduation ceremony with a certificate. So it's a really great way of showing that you've reached out and added value to your senior phase. So it's a, it's a great way of uh, really stretching yourself. So. Fifth, uh, fourth year is going into fifth year. Parents, I hope that's been an interesting dive into our options. I now need to show you some technicalities for how we go about getting your information. A bit like fourth year, we need to do it digitally. So if you were to go to our website and you see the lighthouse, you can click on this button, our curriculum, and it takes you to another set of buttons where you can look at the different subject areas. But here, Brock curriculum and then senior phase options. Okay, and that opens up our specialist website all about our options. And you can have a look at the options form there. And then when you're ready, you click on this button and it opens up the digital options Microsoft form. But the more important and interesting thing is to advise you to take a deep dive over the next month or so and look at all the different faculty areas and the courses they've got on offer. Let's have a quick look into business and computing faculty. And as you can see here, we've got a very neat um, setup where you can have a look at the business based subjects um, and they've got some videos explaining where they can lead and the computing based subjects. And this rather dizzying one here is a new course on offer this year in games design. So let's have a look at that. If you click on it, it will open up our course card. And this should look familiar. Here's all the different skills that this subject really emphasizes. Um, computational thinking, communicating, numeracy, digital research, but also where it could lead you. For example, NESCO courses in games development, RGU courses, um, and computer science courses. OK, and then that's what the actual course content has in it terms of the units and the levels and you can do that at level four five or six importantly no end of a year exam in games development it's an ongoing assessment where you actually have to you have to actually make a game believe it or not um which would be you know not too surprising but that's how it's assessed ongoing assessment and again alternatively if we click on the senior phase accounting similar idea we've got this rather pretty uh, course card telling you the skills where it could lead and how it is assessed now, accounting is an end of year assessment and, and it's through homework uh, tests um, and looking good. OK, so um, I invite you to take a deep dive into these different faculty areas, finding out all they've got on offer. If you want to look at more detail at the college and their options, then you can click on that button there and the Duke of Edinburgh also here and an S56 curriculum option. Finally, more information on the RGU access to an ACES for fifth and sixth year. So this website, very, very detailed, well, um, plenty to look at over the Christmas period, um, over a mince pie. Uh, do have a quick look. It is plenty to get your teeth stuck into. Now, this evening, you'll have five minute meetings to talk to your teachers. When the time comes up, please be mindful parents that uh, the, the, it will automatically take you to your next meeting. Uh, it will feel very new to you. 
However, um, the teachers have done this before, so they'll keep you right. If you have got any burning questions, please ask them at the beginning of the conversation because you may well run out of time at the end. Um, I do uh, applaud you for your bravery in doing the virtual meetings. Uh, the teachers have had a go, as I say, and it went really well last time. And I'd look forward to hearing your feedback about how it went this time. Thank you for listening to this uh, meeting. I'm going to close this uh, this meeting just now. A video will be made available on the website if you want to look back at anything that I've said. Um, and I wish you all the best for your curriculum future seniors. And I look forward to seeing you in person parents, maybe at next parents evening. Take care, everybody. And thank you very much for listening.